Welcome everyone, <clears throat> Dr. Thor here and get ready for Gnosis. Well, one of my many continuing series is the most ignored master martial artist. Now, <clears throat> uh, I brought up the great master that is totally basically ignored except for Blast of the Past and uh, of the 1980 Ninja Films. Uh, show Kasugi, who is alive and living in Los Angeles and has active in the movie business to a degree, has his own teaching, he does stuff around the world, but thanks to the martial arts fandom, uh, three guys and a monkey, um, none of these people are appreciated. Uh, the endless lauding over Bruce Lee is so boring. And so mentally retarded, it isn't even funny. Now, Bruce Lee himself had his pros and cons. Obviously, people love him, particularly uh, non-European uh, types who find him to be a hero, I think because of his racial background. They have somebody to identify with. I can understand that. Uh, certainly, he didn't leave much and didn't have a chance. He died too young. So I don't think he would have become a big movie star anyway. Nobody has in the martial arts business, and there have been many of them. The only person we have that makes kind of lots of films that are expensive is that goofball, Jackie Chan. Oh, me sing, me jump, me, me, me comedy. Well, I don't consider those martial arts movies. I don't know if he's ever made a serious movie. They're action films where he does mostly ballet stuff, jumping around tables, flying up, whatever. I don't, uh, while his, some of his films are amusing, um... And fun, I don't consider them action films or martial art films in any way. They're stunt films with some sort of bizarre ballet that he does. Bruce Lee was starting to make some good films, but it would have never went anywhere because martial arts was never that popular. Uh, Kung Fu, the TV series, only lasted three years, and nothing came after that, as there is nothing today except the Karate Kid, uh, which people kind of like, which I kind of see more as a soap opera than any kind of martial arts, but it's a good show and the only successful martial arts show uh, in about 25 years since Martial Law, that ran for, again, three years, which was a great show with Sammo Hung, um, Arsenio Hall, had some great fight scenes, and I thought was a fun TV series, full of action, fun, etc. Bye-bye. Well, you martial artists don't support anybody uh, anywhere, anytime. And, of course, you're hung up on a whole bunch of bozos that haven't done anything, really. The only guy who's doing consistent films out there is uh, Van Damme who has made a couple of kind of interesting films recently, uh, which I will be, be reviewing soon, um, and who does action films. But he can't get a budget over $5 million, which means uh, two cars and a chicken that uh, is able to be done. So um, it's the same old story. And then we have people that have been ignored. Now, um, the uh, true warrior. And there's been a couple of people who are actually uh, involved uh, what you could say in a little higher level of the military. Um, and of course, Oliver Gruner, the Frenchman, is a verified special forces man. Now, uh, Chuck Norris, um, who's kind of a semi-small guy, I think he's 5'7 or something, um, was in the military police. And I don't really think he saw any serious action in Korea. So, uh, apparently his brother, though, Chuck Norris's brother, was in Vietnam and was lost in action. He's an MIA, uh, which is interesting. It just shows you again how we get caught up. But apparently uh, Chuck, uh, or maybe he got stationed there deliberately, but he was in the military police. I'm not, or I don't know anything about his career, and I'm not necessarily, you know, I just don't have the time to read all these books. So you got to pick up things here and there. I've always liked Norris's films, uh, and, but they're kind of simplistic, but I thought they were pretty well done for the low-budget canon films they were. But Oliver uh, Gruner is um, definitely a warrior. Now, we also have Joe Lewis, not the boxer, but the karate guy, who's probably the greatest martial artist, started full-contact karate, and uh, was basically a kind of kick-ass guy. Um, 
Now, all professional martial artists are kind of kick-ass guys. I don't think you want to go up and spit on anybody of these guys. I don't think you want to challenge them. Um, all that stuff, unless you're uh, somebody else who's fully trained. They're going to pound you into the ground, and certainly all of these people are able to do it. Um, so this is not a problem, if that's even. But, you know, again... They can't dodge bullets, and uh, we live in a world of guns, but certainly if it's hand-to-hand, -hand, uh, these people are very skilled. And we have to go that they're all skilled, and I think that we should stop picking on who is best to the other. Uh, so, uh, But we have to look at this, and we've talked about the military records. Now, Bruce Lee never was in the military. To uh, Few people understand that he kind of came from a rich family. It was pampered. Um, apparently, he was persecuted by his fellow Chinese who, because he had a quarter of Dutch Jewish blood in him, and they teased him and beat him for that. Isn't that ironic? <laughs> so, um, he was given breaks by all of Hollywood and all the people in America, and California in particular, movie stars went to him, white movie stars, white producers, all the other people that helped him, and the people who thumped on him, uh, in childhood and uh, up to the, his, uh, his making his movies were all his fellow Chinese who didn't see him as Chinese and didn't think he should be teaching um, non-Chinese. And this is around the world. So everybody should get that because I'm so sick of hearing uh, this racist stuff. You know, sometimes when uh, you are not part of the crowd, you become special and you get special uh, treatment. Certainly Bruce Lee got that including obtaining a American Caucasian wife. So that's how prejudiced things were. So the whole idea is that um, this is part of it. But I don't want to harp on him. I already spent too much time on that bozo, but uh, everybody is still caught up in all that nonsensical stuff that I'm sick and tired of hearing it. Um, you know, you just hear more and more garbage about Bruce Lee as time come out. His fur coats he owned. I just heard that he got himself circumcised so he could look like an American because Americans get circumcised as a common rule. Uh, this comes from, of course, the ancient Egyptians. It's cleaner. It looks better, etc. But the point is, is that um, this is the kind of goofy things this guy did. He wasn't even happy with that. He wanted to blend in. He wanted to become this great movie star and sacrificed everything to do it. He was not a thinker. He was not a philosophical guy. He played the wise Chinese man, and it worked for him. Unfortunately, um, he had real common bad attitudes. He whored around. He took lots of drugs and got himself into all sorts of trouble. And um, as I still contend, uh, the triads had him on the list as well as everything else. So, Apparently, uh, what he died from is what uh, cocaine addicts at times die from. But the bottom line is there's an awful lot of cocaine addicts that never die from this. So let's not get overly carried away with that. Drugs were big then, but he certainly wasn't going to the temple and meditating. Uh, he was going to the whorehouse and taking drugs. So let's get this clear. So uh, he looked great on film. He was a great actor, and um, but he would have never made it, not because of his skills, Nobody cared. He got a series. It bombed. How many people get series in period that are actors? Hardly anyone. So, so let's move on to Oliver Gruener. Uh, well, this is a French guy. He came from a upper class family. All of his um, family apparently were noted surgeons. Um, and uh, he decided and his brother became an engineer, so it states. What's interesting about this guy is how much he's ignored. And I don't see his films anywhere or anything else. Now, I started watching his films along with all the other ones because uh, I watched all those films. The Chuck Norris films, his films, uh, who else was out there? Uh, uh, I didn't watch Seagal all that much, um, but I watched everybody out there. The uh, Ninja films, um, Van Damme, etc. All these people I watched because uh, I always liked and enjoyed those films, and I think um, most guys do, um, as action films and as martial arts. But a lot of these films are not really martial arts. They tend to be a little bit too at much action, and they these action these martial arts films turned into gun films and shooting films, as they are kind of today, as the mixture of things. Um, but he's made over 40 films. How many of you here can name one film by him? Well, I think that's sad. 
And you know something? I can't. I remember him, but I can't remember a single one of the films that uh, he made. And I have to wonder, why is that? Were they not good? Well, I'm not sure, and I don't remember. I'm going to try and look up some of his films and watch them yet again. I think he had a heavy French accent. That may have turned people off, kind of like Bruce Lee's problem with speaking. Um, but we do have to understand, 40 films. Wow. And these films go all the way. Uh, the last film he made was in um, 2016 called Beyond the Game, which I have not seen. He made one in 2010, One Night, Lost Warrior in 28. So, I mean, um, it starts to get back there, though. You know, once you go back to 2010, you're talking, you know, 12 years ago. Um, so this is all very interesting with... Um, uh, his background, but this is a guy who's extremely well trained, not in street fighting, not in uh, your typical type of fighting, or even in a military fight. Like Joe Lewis was a Marine. Um, uh, the, um, as I said, Chuck Norris was in the Army. Um, so, you know, Marines are trained to kill. I don't know how uh, how he can rate Army in general, but certainly is a military, and they teach you how to shoot and kill. So uh, Bruce Lee was not trained in that type of uh, warfare. But this is a guy who was a commando in the French Marines, a special division of the commando, considered one of the best um, uh, fighting units in all of Europe as a naval commander, which ironically had the name Green Berets. I guess they wore, wore, wore Green Berets, uh, which is interesting. Um, so this isn't something you just go through. Apparently the attrition rate to become one of these commandos, just like it is in the most special forces unit, was an 80% attrition, meaning uh, only about 20% of the people that try and become this achieve it. Um, so this is quite amazing. This is real fighting stuff. This guy learns how, and to this day, because he really doesn't have an acting career, is went into military training, uh, executive training, uh, etc. So um, this is quite uh, interesting and also shows you that. So, uh, so the point is, is that he did all these movies. People should look them out. Angel Town Savant. I vaguely remember watching that from 1995. Mercenary. Savage, 1996. Uh, um, Kamite. I think it's another thing I remember seeing. 2000. Um, so they, they must be out there and easy to find somewhere um, to rent or... Uh, you probably can pick these up very cheaply off of the net and get physical copies. I'm not sure if we can, where you can find these, but they're certainly out there. I used to buy a lot of these kind of films very cheap, like Von Don films. They put them together three or four very inexpensively. Um, he became uh, France's middleweight champion and then middleweight full contact kickboxing champion in 1985. Full contact kickboxing in 1985. So, we, and again, middleweight kickboxing champs in 1986. So this guy, uh, kickboxing, this is full contact. This isn't points uh, as uh, apparently Chuck Norris um, won in points. And I'm not sure uh, if one is better than the other. It looks better. But, you know, if you've got good judges, uh, you don't necessarily have to hit the guy uh, to, obviously, that would have been a score. But whatever. Um. He started studying Shotokan karate, then boxing, then kickboxing, then full contact, um, which is essentially a mixture of Western boxing and, tr and traditional karate. So he did become this, and as he said, the uh, the naval uh, command, the Marine commandos of the navy of the French Navy, uh, is considered one of the toughest NATO special forces groups. Okay, so this is a guy. Um, he's trained. Uh, he also can fly a helicopter. Uh, he's an expert in firearms and assault tactics, climbing, rappelling, boat handling, skydiving, sub uh, scuba diving, explosive instructions, and hand to hand combat. Bruce learned how to wear fur coats and cha cha. 
So the whole idea is that we need to fully understand it. He saw physical military action in Somalia, where he was involved in active combat and active anti-piracy operations. So this is a guy that wasn't sitting on the base uh, uh, pretty much like Chuck Norris uh, must have been doing. I don't think he saw any action in Korea unless it was in some sort of local bar. So the bottom line, he wasn't uh, shooting guns. He wasn't out there. He wasn't doing any of this. So he did chain, train as that. So, But he wasn't involved in combat like his brother was, who sadly is missing in action, obviously dead. Um, so this is the special force. This is like being not in the military, not a Marine. This is like being a Green Beret, okay? Like, the, uh, actually, to... Um, well, his unit was called that. Since he's in the Navy, this would be like everybody who thinks that they're so great is uh, the Navy SEALs. So definitely these people are top special forces, highly trained people. So this is like being a, a French Navy SEAL. And I think we can all agree that these are kick-ass guys that uh, certainly uh, have skills. Um, so in 1981, he left the French military um, to compete full-time as a kickboxer. And, of course, he showed that he became a championship there. Then he decided to promote it. It's interesting how these people do things. And um, um, uh, to go out into the films. Apparently, he went out and promoted himself. Um, he did some serious self-promotion in 1987 at the Cannes Film Festival, posting posters of himself, etc. And, of course, he was a semi-celebrity because he had um, achieved these titles in the kickboxing. And then, of course, like all these guys do that are smart, uh, screams around that, you know, I'm a Navy SEAL. So uh, this is great things to... Um, uh, so apparently some producer contacted him, or some American producer, brought him over to America, and uh, he did some screen tests, etc. He joined the Imperial Entertainment Corporation, Turner Classic Movies now, and began acting in action movies. Um, uh, and uh, blah, blah, blah. So he's been working with a whole bunch of things, and nobody's ever heard of him. Um, he frequently appeared in martial arts magazines, uh, Inside Kung Fu, Kung Fu Years. So I guess if you're a person who reads all those uh, martial arts magazines, uh, that you would have heard of him. But, you know, I've never heard anybody bring this guy's name up. It's quite fascinating. Um, so, um, and he did make 40 films. 40 films is a lot of films. Um uh, all of this is, is uh, exactly what we should have brought on. But this is why we have nothing going on. Do you think Bruce Lee would have gotten anywhere? Even if Bruce Lee would have done the Kung Fu TV series, I don't think it would have lasted one season, but let's say it lasted three. And again, everybody thinks he's great now. Back then, he was Bruce who? Oh, the guy that hangs out with Steve McQueen? Steve McQueen didn't even want to put him in movies. He didn't think that he really had what it took. And, of course, uh, his other buddy um, uh, that he trained uh, was very much, uh, James Colburn, was very much into philosophy. And, of course, Bruce played that game of being the philosopher, went to school for that, uh, and read those books regurgitated. Apparently, his philosophy was mostly based on his uh, original sensei, IP man, and he just mouthed what he said. I don't think he learned much. And certainly, he didn't have a library of uh, philosophical books. He liked to read uh, things of how to make money. Uh, he liked uh, positive thinking books and all of those things. And, of course, that makes sense. I mean, you know, a lot of this old philosophy. But, of course, you can get the stupid Americans, white dudes. Yeah, he, he's, he's your wife. Uh, we ought to support him. Um, that doesn't put money in your pocket unless you can turn that uh, into that. So, um, he did apparently uh, have a guest appearance um on martial law that I talked about recently. So he appeared multiple times, um, 26 episodes of the television series Code Name Eternity. Never seen it. And that was 2001. Um, in 2005, NBC uh, contacted him for producing a TV series named The Pros, A Way of Life. This was a project that... Uh, Gruner himself had started um, 
in video have starred in videos since 19 uh, since uh, 2003 the show happens uh, it shows what happens behind the scene and the life and training of professional athletes that certainly would be interesting never heard of it again but you know there's so much out there I, a lot of stuff you just never see uh, he did different episodes on boxers, surfers, MMA fighters, and when NBC finally decided to shelve the TV series, it was never published again. A video published by Gruner is available, apparently. So one of those things that disappeared, and there's been several of these things. Um, he also played Ivan in the TV series Seven Days, again, which uh, was... Uh, it says published here. I don't know what that means in 2019. So seven days. Don't again. Don't know. Um, he was a director in 2001 of an Interceptor Force Two. Um, in 2011, that's not too long ago. Ten years ago, uh, he was a director and actor in Regenerator. Uh, retitling of the film was One Night, on which Gruen had been working since 2010. Uh, all this stuff is, goes right over my head. Uh, in two, uh, 2014, he features as a director in Section 4 Extraction, a direct-to-video release. 2015, uh, released one more film as director, producer, and screenwriter, and actor, EP Executive Protection. That was the last film he basically made of any uh, important. Of course, he had to do like most people did. He had to write it. He had to produce it and direct it. I'm assuming the budget on that was less than an executive's uh, lunch in Hollywood. Um, so here's a guy that's uh, really out there. Nobody cares. He lives in Santa Monica, Los Angeles, California. So he has one son. And which is quite interesting. So he's still there, just like uh, Shokasugi, uh, who is living in Los Angeles as well. And I don't know if they ever see each other or not. Probably not, um, as that community seems to not work together whatsoever. So it's kind of um, mind-boggling, as usual, with all this stuff. So here's a guy that uh, has uh, proven himself as a warrior. Now, I'm not such a big fan uh, of people who have uh, championship titles, but, you know, that's part of the game of this. But this guy is, is producing professional military videos now, um, and you can go to his website, which I'll leave a link here. Um, he does professional military training, weapons, executive protection. This is really military kick-ass deadly stuff here. This isn't a guy who was in the reserves, uh, like George Bush Jr., yeah, yeah, I was in Texas for the war. Yeah. Somebody threw a bottle at me once. So the whole idea is that uh, these are the type of things that, of course, um, uh, are completely and totally overlooked by everybody. Um, but as you said, I'm not a big fan of uh, people who compete in tournaments. Uh, people uh, as, um, you know, Bruce Lee had nothing to benefit from that. As, as I've always said, if he won the tournament, oh, you're just showing off. If he lost, well, you're a weasel. You can't win anyway, and I'm not sure that tournaments mean anything. That's not a real fight either. Um, so the whole idea is how does that all work? And you can't kill each other either. But here's a guy who's killed people, probably many, who was a professional warrior in Somalia, who was a uh, what's considered a French Navy SEAL that cannot be argued with. Now, how is he in hand-to-hand <coughs> -hand combat? Well, he's proven in tournaments uh, that he's been the world champion in those particular areas uh, in kickboxing, which is, you know, pretty much street fighting to a degree. It's a combination of boxing and, and uh, Western and Eastern martial arts. So, you know, this is what people do now. They don't really, I'm not sure if anybody has a particular style. That's pretty much MMA. And here's another guy who multi-trained. You know, the whole idea is people cop out saying, well, yeah, Bruce Lee was the MMA. He, he pushed, of course, he pushed everything together like everybody else does. There's not a single martial artist that I am familiar with who hasn't trained in multi -trained. Traditions. You, it's just what you do. You learn grappling. You learn uh, new, uh, ninja tactics. You learn how to, I don't know if people learn how to use weapons or swords, but generally you do. You learn certain things of Kung Fu. A lot of people don't learn Kung Fu because it's kind of a goofy uh, that you have to bend like uh, some sort of um, animal, and it becomes kind of a goofy thing. I know when I looked around at Kung Fu schools, they said, I'm not going to bend like that. That's ridiculous. Um 
So the bottom line is that totally and completely ignored, as most people are. So um, in this area and have little or no support. So well, everybody should go out and look this guy up and check out his movies, which there's many of them out there. As I said, he's, uh, he's done series. Apparently he's been around, things I haven't uh, mentioned. Um, uh, this is a guy we should look into. This guy is a true warrior. This guy is just not some martial arts clucking guy uh, with uh, of these horrible uh, kung fu um movies uh, that you see so many of. This is a guy who's professional military, and that needs to be noted as all the rest of them are professional military. So again, he's neglected. Nobody cares. Nobody talks about him. He gets a little bit of work, um, just as Sho does, and is here and there. You know, uh, Sho Kasugi uh, did a the ninja movie, which was to revive his ninja movie. Very slick. I talked about this. Uh, I believe it was the Revenge of the Ninjas or something. Extremely well done, well produced, well filmed, well everything. And it was done in the very Japanese fashion of ninja films, which is um, unrealistic but very bloody, where people's bodies are cut in half and huge amounts of blood. But, you know, that's how the Japanese made these types of movies. Uh, so it was made in that fashion, extremely well done by... Um, Silver, the producer, I think his name is not Ron Silver, but whatever, Silver, who was a producer of the Matrix film, and the Matrix people were involved in that too. Well. The, the, um, the two sisters that made, um, uh, as they are now, uh, the Matrix, which their name's Kowalski, whatever it is, um, they made this film because they were very big into this manga and anime stuff, which uh, the Matrix reflects dramatically. So this was a fan. Has anybody seen it? I never even knew it was out there. I just happened to run into it on Netflix. Now, I don't know what you can find on Netflix with this guy or where else, but it's worth trying to find a place where you can either rent these or buy them, etc. Here's a guy that put together some great stuff and knew what he was doing. And anything that he's in is something should be checked out. But does anybody know of this guy? He lives in Southern California. He's in Los Angeles, Santa Monica. Um, probably lives close to show who's somewhere around there. And um, nobody cares. So we're going to toddle on about the uh, constant uh, hero glorification, uh, which just gets worse and worse every day with Bruce Lee. Uh, who just comes out more and more from uh, getting circumcised, wearing mink coats, buying a Cadillac. He looked like a pimp. There's pictures of him. Um, he, um, his soap opera watching, his whoring around, his cha cha I mean, this guy is uh, certainly not this whizzed man of wisdom um, who spent most of his time meditating and seeking higher knowledge of empowerment. No, he's out there trying to be Mr. Movie Star and um, not really looking at the bigger picture. And he got the chance, and something happened tragically here. Uh, I tend to think now it's a combination of factors, um, but he was having these terrible uh, problems with his health for a while there, even though this was never reported. Um, Apparently, and I've stated this in the fact, is that he had no health conditions until he went to, apparently, uh, to Hong Kong. Uh, there's also talk that he had his sweat glands removed from underneath his arms because it didn't look attractive enough. Well, how actor of you. So uh, this, again, could have caused overheating and some of the problems he had. But he's been linked, particularly at that time, where all of society were taking all sorts of hallucinogens and other drugs. I mean, you know, the Beatles did an entire album about hallucinogens. I think it's the Sgt. Pepper one. Uh, Octopus's Garden, uh, Strawberry Fields Forever. Yeah, well, that's just a drug thing, man. So, did anybody get this? So, this is what people were doing. So, I don't necessarily want to condemn them. Now, the point is, is that hallucinogens, as far as I understand, and uh, has an effect people that makes them dead. Um, uh, cocaine, if you take too much of it, and apparently, we don't know how much. Apparently, he was getting a lot of this sent from his white friend in Hollywood who was sending it through the mail at that time, and I'm assuming you could get away with a lot back then, um, through the mail. Um, so all of this comes out that this guy, you know, l l let's start moving on to other people. What bothers me is that both of the guys here, this Oliver uh, Gruner 
and uh, Shokasugi were are alive. They're here now. Why aren't we doing something? Why aren't they giving out? Uh, Oliver uh, here is only 61. So he's still got, you know, 10, 20 years. Um, show, I think, is 71 or so. And still, that's quite a bit of time. And apparently, both of them are in uh, good um, uh, health. So, I mean, these are people that we should be... Uh, getting out there, recognizing, finding out what they're doing. I mean, these people should be uh, putting together, uh, well, of course, um, both of these guys basically are um, putting, um, uh, he, uh, Oliver is making kick-ass um, military training things. You can go out, he'll train you out there personally. For, uh, they cost thousands of dollars, but this is, you know, a person who's going to show you hands-on, apparently. Or, I think they're even uh, kind of expensive videos. But what is expensive? This is the top in the field. Um, so I'm not sure what all that means. Uh, but here are people that have stuff. They're doing their things that we need to honor. And, um, yeah, sh show is um, 73 now, which isn't that old in this time and age any longer. You know, average life expectancy is close to 80. And if you take care of yourself and have a good background, uh, your average Japanese is living to be 86, 87 easily. So, I mean, here's a guy that we should let. He's got his own business. Everybody ignores him. The films, people are not going to them. They're not making money. Uh, this is sad. We now live in a world that has so much time to fill with uh, all of these cable uh, programs, but nobody can seem to get this off. Now, Netflix did have a, a mystical series. I always forget the name of that uh, that was on for one season. It hasn't been renewed, and I frankly doubt that it will. Why? Well, it obviously didn't have enough people uh, watching it uh, for it to be renewed. So it's as simple as that because if you get enough uh, viewership and they know exactly how many people watch everything they make, they generally renew something. It didn't have enough. And it was a great mystical type um, Chinese magical thing completely uh, ignored and it was not successful. Really sad. And here we got two guys. Both of these could be valuable assets in a good action martial arts movies. And they are not really getting anything. Apparently, Oliver has been on TV shows and played different parts. But um, really, we're, we're not getting anything serious here. And that's your fault, martial arts people. Stop looking back to somebody who was around 50 years ago and made a real bunch of crappy movies and start getting behind these people. Until next time.